formal business of the meeting is now concluded. Thank you all for attending. And now Brent Charlton will provide a brief presentation on the state of affairs of the corporation. Brent, over to you. Thanks very much, John. A lot of positive momentum is building behind the curtain in both of our business units. And I look forward to reviewing the recent performance of our company and the outlook moving forward. I'll be taking questions on mentioned at the end of the summary presentation if any registered shareholders wish to ask. So before I begin, please note our disclaimer concerning today's presentation and discussion. I will be provided, providing several forward-looking statements and suggest that all participants review our risk factors in our AIF dated September 30th, 2021 filed on CDAR. Enway's vision is to be the preferred advanced drying technology and solutions provider for both food and cannabis companies globally. Our patented vacuum microwave technology has been proven at commercial scale, is protected by a robust intellectual property suite including 20 patent families, distinct know-how and trade secrets. The value proposition of our tech is material and as a result, we have been successful in implementing a licensing royalty business model. Our distinctive excellence is that we offer the most scalable and reliable vacuum microwave machinery in the market and that we apply our thorough understanding of this process as it applies to specific food and cannabis applications. Vacuum microwave technology, when perfected, offers compelling advantages over incumbent drying technologies. Fiscal 2021 was the best year for our N-Way business unit in the history of the company, while Nutri-Dried was in recovery mode. I'll now move to some more pertinent business unit specific updates, starting with the N-Way business segment, followed by Nutri-Dried. We signed 14 new commercial license agreements and received 540 kilowatts of rev machinery purchase orders, including four large-scale units and 14 10 kilowatt machines. Of the orders we received, four were repeat orders from existing licensed partners and three were consummated by third-party machine resellers, demonstrating that our strategy to develop a hybrid sales structure is working. Of the new CLA signed, two were with major companies in the U.S. cannabis industry. We also signed a strategic global partnership with Dole to develop innovative nutrition solutions, which is maturing nicely. We generated record revenue, $13.9 million, adjusted EBITDA, $3.3 million, net profit, $1.2 million, and gross margin at 51%. That momentum in fiscal 21 continued in Q1. We recorded the highest third-party quarterly royalties ever in Q1. Our improved royalty revenue contributed to $4.3 million in revenue, $1.1 million EBITDA, and most importantly, $600K in net income. We also generated a 60% gross margin in Q1 due to the strategic redeployment of machinery to our U.S. cannabis partner in Illinois. We expect that our gross margin to contract through the next three quarters to the mid-40 percentiles as we don't have any additional large-scale machines to strategically purchase and redeploy at healthy margin. In regards to machine startups, we continue to commission 10 kilowatt machines remotely with three new units coming online and we finished the installation of the first 120 kilowatt line at our cannabis partner in Illinois, which they have been using consistently for the production of all of their cannabis products since startup. We also secured new repeat purchase orders from Dairy Concepts based in Ireland, another 10 kilowatt, their second, and a second 120 kilowatt machine for our Illinois cannabis licensee, and also signed two new Taloas technology evaluation license option agreements. The most interesting was a company called PIP International based in Lethbridge, Alberta, for the drying of high-value pea protein isolate products. We expect that this will pick up steam, this project, in the spring as we intensify our collaboration and development efforts. One of our primary goals is to materially grow a diversified portfolio of royalties paid to us by our licensed partners. After a stagnant fiscal 2020, we have seen solid compound annual growth in our base third-party royalties and an improved top-up amount paid by certain licensees to maintain certain exclusive rights within their licenses. With many more large-scale rev machines set to be commissioned soon, we expect third-party royalties to continue to grow. Our distinctive excellence previously mentioned has allowed us to consummate 38 royalty-bearing licenses to date with food manufacturers including Dole, which I mentioned, a household name that we're all familiar with, Calbi, the largest snacking company in Japan with global presence, PepsiCo, through their Bear Snack brand, among many other emerging and established brands. 
Many of these companies have the potential to purchase multiple large-scale rev machines from us, and we expect several to convert from 10 kilowatt units to large machinery this fiscal year. Our pipeline is full, and we could see an influx of orders through the next two quarters. Our partners have also been recognized for their innovations. Branch Out Foods, a family-owned business in Oregon whose mission is to bring the most nutritious plant-based products to market, has launched avocado chips, blueberry powder, and chewy banana snacks, along with other snacks and powders into the U.S. market. In 2021, the Chewy Banana Snack won a Small Business Innovation Award at the Sweet and Snacks Expo. Another one of our partners, Responsible Foods, is a snack company that launched Nera, a brand that's rooted and embedded in Iceland. Nera uses no baking, frying, air drying, or freeze drying, so they use less energy than typical snack production processes to create cheese and yogurt snacks. In 2021, at the World Dairy Innovation Awards, Nera won Best Dairy Protein Product for its Icelandic cheese snack. It received high commendation for its yogurt snack and was nominated for Best Brand or Business. Quite admirable accomplishments. In the cannabis industry, we currently have 10 licensees using our tech, and we've sold three 120 kilowatt units in the past year to US-based companies alone. Our largest and most present opportunity in the cannabis market is the highly fragmented US market. I believe that we are on the cusp of securing several new machine orders following recent technology demonstrations and subsequent product analysis. A domino effect here is realistic to anticipate. We're also seeing increased demand for GMP machinery for the Australasian and European markets. We've had success this past year selling multiple 10 kilowatt GMP units and think a large scale GMP sale could be on the horizon. We firmly believe that rev technology should dominate drying in this market due to the quantitative data and qualitative feedback we've generated over the past year via collaborations with established producers. The independently generated data shows that REV keeps 25% more THC than traditional rack drying, 25% more total cannabinoids, and 20% more total terpenes. As you can see on the slide, the color is vibrant and the dried product is shown here, which certainly has impressed users and evaluators of our technology. And if you look closer, the trichrome structure the little white beads that you see there, if you're not familiar with that term, looks exactly like a rumor rack dried product and what the industry expects. We're seeing growth in the number of both food and cannabis licensees, as you can see on this particular chart. Since taking on leadership within N-Wave with our team in 2018, we've more than doubled the number of royalty bearing licenses in our portfolio. And we anticipate continued growth this year. We're targeting another eight large scale orders still, 60 to 70% expected to come from existing licensed partners in the latter half of fiscal 2022. In anticipation of an influx of potential purchase orders, we're addressing supply chain challenges up front. We've had several suppliers of critical componentry inform us of both price increases and length and lead times. We are increasing our prices in turn but the length and lead times have encouraged us to make critical investment decisions now in order to meet the demands of our current and future royalty partners. We decided to move ahead with a 990K commitment to complete the fabrication of two partially built 120 kilowatt machines that we purchased back from TGOD a few years ago. One has been sold already to Orto El Sol, a partner of ours in Italy, and the other will likely go to another food or cannabis prospect in the near term. Given these supply delays and our confidence in our pipeline, we also plan to build two additional 120 kilowatt machines on spec. The spending schedule is somewhat consistent through the fabrication process, so we can spread out the expenses likely for the next six to eight months. Our goal is to confirm orders for these two units prior to completion and then begin to build on spec again for the next round of potential orders. We've also increased the uh, level of inventory we have on hand in order to support our current partners, which will certainly allow for us to shorten the, the time from uh, providing additional componentry when, when needed. We've also recently invested in the improvement of our N-Way brand by recently rolling out a fresh set of graphic treatments and story-based content to better sell the value proposition of our patented technology. In our new materials, we are emphasizing our role as a solutions provider and not just a technology purveyor. Our brand story will be told with authenticity, 
and consistency across all of our marketing collateral. In the cannabis sector this past year, we had several marketing highlights worth noting. We published a white paper regarding the preservation of terpenes through the use of rep technology in cannabis that earned over 1,800 views and led to some material conversations for potential commercialization. We continued to build our content library, collecting more than 1,000 high-res photos of finished product and machines in action. We exhibited for the first time ever at MJ BizCon in Las Vegas to develop our U.S. business. And lastly, we created an integral video profiling the large-scale installation at the Green Organic Dutchman's facility in Ontario, which has led to more than 3,000 views on YouTube thus far. Our marketing efforts to drive new food business this past year included the launch of RevWorks earlier this month, and with several plan efforts forthcoming to garner new business for this service that we are now offering. We also specifically targeted industry associations to promote snacking innovation through the use of RevTech. We published new case studies and technical content and collaborated more closely with several of our licensed partners to co-market each other's wares. With the launch of RevWorks having recently occurred, we've been busy running line trials and have planned efforts to pursue our SQF certification, which is safe quality food, a very well-recognized standard within the larger CPG space, within three months. All major equipment is now in place, which I'll show you on the next slide. And our first line trial was for frozen tempeh products, which was very successful. The second plan is for frozen blueberries, and we also plan to dry instant ramen for our current partner, Yamachan, in the coming months as well as several fruit snack products for our current large license partner in April. With COVID protocols lightening and more companies wanting to visit us now, RevWorks will be our showpiece, the gem of our innovation center. Comments received from SciTech, one of our, or is it our Australian reseller who recently visited us in Vancouver and is very experienced working with other OEMs, really emphasized the professional image that we projected and, and that feedback was welcomed and I think we're on the right track in terms of furthering the commercialization of Rev through this effort. RevWorks is now being promoted as the first vacuum microwave toll manufacturing facility of its kind anywhere in the world. We will be leveraging our trade publication contacts, third-party machine resellers, aforementioned including SciTech, and industry partners to promote this service ongoing. This particular slide shows you the facility itself. So the top left, we have one of our 10 kilowatt units installed for smaller production runs for initial proof of concept entry into the market or focus group testing. And then the top right shows our continuous 60 kilowatt line with several employees preparing for that frozen tempeh dehydration line trial, which you can see in the bottom right. And then lastly, bottom left shows both machines together. So as you can see, we have a food grade facility up and running, ready for servicing companies both big and small on a go-forward basis. I'll now move to the Nutri-Dried business unit, and I can confidently say that regardless of its weak performance in Q1 and, and, and back into fiscal 2020 and 2021, Nutri-Dried is positioned well uh, to return to profitability later in 22 and into 2023. Nutri-Dried currently has two 100 kilowatt rev lines in operation, currently running at about a 35%, 30% utilization rate, and we expect that use rate to increase through the rest of this year based on recent distribution wins and also certain new innovative product opportunities. If both lines were to be fully utilized, about 40 million U.S. of product can be produced per annum. Nutridride served its initial purpose, which was to prove excuse me, out rev technology at scale and de-risk adoption decisions. It evolved into a compelling high-growth snack brand through 2019 and went through a tough time in 2020 and 2021, which we're all aware of. We restructured the business in February 21, hired a new CEO with the right mindset, and are now set up for a return to stability and growth in the latter half of this year, supported by new product launches and, of course, like I said, distribution wins. But that distribution is set to grow materially starting in the second half of fiscal 22, driven by a few different specific um, opportunities, including three SKUs going into all 2,200 Kroger stores the national distribution of our new Styx product line in Whole Foods, and most recently we received confirmation that we'll be distributing the Styx product also in a select group of Walmart stores uh, at the tail end of this year, among others. Immense interest for this particular Styx format is present, and we're working on some material club opportunities that we hope to confirm in the relative near term. 
Further, with this diverse distribution that our current executive management team has built out and it continues to grow, there's no material customer concentration at Nutridrite any longer, with all under 12% respectively. Our executive team at Nutridrite are focused on driving growth by building up core grocery distribution, the aforementioned innovation with the launch of Sticks, expanding our e-commerce presence, a heavy up marketing investment, growing our bulk sales in both North America and exportation, winning new private label business, which is different from the bulk sales orders, and other co-packing deals, which our sales team at N-Wave are collaborating with the sales group down at Nutridrite to, to win, to bring into our, our business. As I said, Nutridrive was not only was, well, it was a proof of concept for our technology at scale, but it also was proof of concept for a vacuum microwave dry cheese snack product. And so from the success of Nutritride, that led to many of our prospects moving forward and launching their own dry cheese snack lines internationally in multiple international markets. And you can see on this particular slide, we have representations from Iceland, throughout Europe, South America, Australia, and this is a snapshot. There are more that are set to be launching um, this year under different brand names and under different formats, which we're looking forward to. Uh, another step forward in growing our diversified royalty portfolio. So as I summarized earlier today, our Q1 performance at, in the NOA business unit was quite strong. Uh, Nutridrides was not, but we expect steady improvement through the rest of the year for the aforementioned reasons. On a consolidated basis, our gross margin improved significantly in Q1 to 43%. As I mentioned, our royalty revenue was healthy and is expected to be strong throughout this year and beyond. And our consolidated revenue is expected to call it catch up in the latter half of this year. We have a strong balance sheet and intend to put cash to work, buying longer lead time components to ensure we have machines available in a timely fashion and to support certain promotional opportunities with Nutridrive, i.e. potential large club promotions. Our focus moving forward in fiscal 22 will be to drive new deals for it, getting them across the goal line, securing multiple new large-scale machine purchase orders, which is absolutely critical to the N-Wave business, and supporting our Nutridrive team as significant new distribution begins for Moon Cheese. We are targeting consolidated positive adjusted EBITDA in fiscal 22 and have a great chance of achieving this if our large-scale machine sales targets are met and Moon Cheese sales in the latter half of the year meet expectations. We have many food and cannabis deals close to decision points, and we're commissioning several, as I mentioned, large new machines in the near term, which are expected to drive immediate royalty growth. And we're cashed up to support strategic inventory build, to alleviate supply chain challenges, and meet our customers' and partners' needs within both units. So with that, I'll now pause to take any questions submitted by our present shareholders. Thank you. Wait a few moments. Okay, and seeing no questions being posed today for this presentation, um, as John mentioned at the beginning of his statements, our entire executive team are readily available to answer any further queries on a one-to-one -one basis. Please reach out to us either through our cell phones available on the website or emails, and we will we will answer accordingly. Thanks very much. Thank you. You may now disconnect your lines. We do appreciate your participation today.